So on the right I have some parts, and on the left I have a project enclosure lid. I want to put the parts in the lid. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the parts on top of the lid, uh, right here. And I'm just going to see the general idea of what I want to do to it. How I want to put the parts, how I want to place them. The next step is to measure things. Uh, measure every dimension that, you, uh, that you're going to need. It should be apparent on which ones you're going to need. Length and width, and also keep in mind the rounds in the corner. If you make it just a square, then the rounds, there'll be a gap. I measure the LCD. Um, uh, the data sheet was actually wrong on most of these parts. They told me it was bigger. Now this switch is pressure fit, uh, so the hole size is very important. And that's the other switch, which is less important because it has a nut to hold it on. And then the uh, width of the uh, project enclosure lid was about 5 inches. And the length of it was 7. My caliper cannot measure uh, that wide, so I had to use a ruler. Here is a 16th inch uh, carbide end mill, and this is what I'm going to be using. This is an 8th inch end mill. And now I'm going to put them side by side. So you can see the size difference between an 8th and a 16th. And here's the bit uh, in the spindle ready to go. So now we're going to create the jig or recess to hold the enclosure panel perfectly parallel to the bit. This is a big problem. If you just put the sheet or if you just secure the thing down, it might not be perfectly parallel on the x axis or the y. And you could end up with a cockeyed cut. The machine's going to work properly, but it's the way the stock is oriented. It's not going to come out right. So by making a jig like, like I'm doing right now, you're going to end up with uh, a cut that is much more accurate. So all I did was I made a rectangle and made the rectangle uh, about 5.1 inches high and 7 inches long, which is larger in length and width than the actual lid is. Just to, It only needs to fit against the zero. So you see the line that's on the y-axis and the line that's on the x. It just needs to fit against those two lines. Uh, the other two don't really matter. So I made it uh, eighth inch deep passes and negative uh, three inches deep for this. And then just export your G-code and cut that into a piece of MDF or uh, any other type of wood. So here's the model I made. This is the front of the model. Uh, watch very carefully. Uh, this is what I want the enclosure to look like, but I'm going to reverse it because when I go and I cut it, it's going to be reversed. Uh, I'm going to cut the panel upside down because the way the panel is, uh, it the panel has like a lip underneath of it, and if I were to put the panel down f uh, right side up, then that you could actually push your finger in the center of the panel and it would bow. By flipping it upside down, the panel has the the wood underneath to support it, and you'll end up with a better cut. So, I just. I just imported the DXF that I exported from Inventor and I just rotated it around. Now I'm going to select it, I'm going to realign it to the other axis on top. Now this part is perfectly parallel in line on the X and Y as the other part. So the recess that we just made was in this exact same position. So now when we put this in, this part uh, the the machine is going to have the same x and y, and we're just going to re we're going to rehome the z axis, and it's going to cut out just those uh, the ones that I've highlighted. So you go and you do an inside uh, profile cut, and I did a uh, three hundredths of an inch per pass and a target depth of negative uh, negative point one. Now make sure the clearance plane up there was higher because the reason I did a negative or I did a 0.3 recess, so that means the bit, the clearance plane's got to be at least 0.3 inches, probably more. So I just went with 0.5. You can't go wrong with the clearance plane. It just might take a longer to move on the z-axis. Not a big deal. And then generate the tool pass and export this to your machine. Just uh, save it. I have a network folder, so I just uh, save it directly to my machine.
and now it's on the machine so we just have to go over to the machine and set it up so now I'm gonna change the bit on my machine and I'm gonna secure the stock material the video is sped up a considerable amount so it's a little tricky to remove the bit this wrench uh, it's an interesting wrench it's a special tool but the problem with it is that it only clicks in on like one part of the uh, collet holder so it takes a little time to get it to lock in and now it's tightened and everything so the next step is to secure the workpiece now as you can see it's upside down it's flat and now it's very secure it's got a lot of support underneath of it and then for some reason I decided to use a hand screwdriver uh, to put these in As you can see I'm wearing a respirator I think you might have been able to see that it is extremely dusty in this box if you don't wear a respirator it's, it's just nasty to inhale all that dust so now I'm tightening it down and the panel is secured and ready to go the next step is to rehome the z-axis remember our z-axis is homed at the table surface when we did the first cut when we made the recess so now all we have to do is lower the z-axis and rehome it on the uh, face of the plastic don't touch the X and Y axis those don't need to be touched that's the reason that's the whole reason we made the recess was to make the X and Y line up perfectly just redo the Z eyeball it it's good enough and now we're gonna start the cutting process so the machine goes up to the high clearance plane you see it went up half an inch it's a lot more than the other uh, eighth inch which is normally what I use and here it goes it's a very very smooth cut I'm going at a high feed rate 42 inches per minute and I'm using a very sharp end mill if you go at too slow of a feed rate and you use a dull end mill what will happen is you'll get increased friction and the end mill uh, you'll get melting plastic but as you can see this is just cutting the plastic away and the cuts that are left behind by this are very nice you'll see those at the end of the video in pictures uh, what you just saw there was uh, when I made the depth negative uh, negative point one, I didn't take into account that it's not actually a tenth of an inch thick plastic. It's only about eight 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 hundredths of an inch, and you'll see right here the machine cuts, and on the third pass the piece is cut free, and then the machine makes another fourth pass uh, that it doesn't need to make and then the piece flies over and I come out and I grab the piece because I thought it might interfere with the last hole here it goes and it makes the last hole and now the piece is pretty much done so now we're going to remove the part from the uh, jig that we made to do this we just uh, unscrew it finally got a power screwdriver it's a lot easier so just take out those screws and once we've got the screws loose the piece will just be uh, sort of fit in there kind of like with a little bit of friction between the uh, walls and so we just gotta break it loose so here it comes put the drill down and uh, now it's come loose as you can see it looks pretty nice So here are some pictures of uh, w what happened after when I started putting it together. You can see uh, this is a, a picture of the cut around. Uh, it's a very nice finish on that cut. There was no sanding, no polishing or anything on this. This is a straight uh, cut in ABS. And this is the underside of it after I put in the two switches. And the same underside after I put in the LCD and the keypad. Then we get a picture of the uh, keypad and the LCD. And this is the whole panel assembled, not on the box yet. You see uh, the amount of distance, it, it's so minuscule you can't even see it. See, the keypad looks like it's perfectly fit in there. It's a very professional looking job. Same thing with the switches, they're perfect. They look like they were meant to be in this panel. They're not hand done, uh, hand done jobs, you can tell. See the LCD, it's perfectly fit. So uh, that's the end of this video, but uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'll have more videos and tutorials on the way. 
Uh, up next, I think I'm going to do some metal cutting. So uh, just check back and 